Hello. I've had a few of these things before. I don't know if you can quite see it. It's not very bright. It's uh, a sort of a weather station thing. It measures internal and external temperature and humidity and makes some sort of attempt at uh, predicting the weather. But they're not great. And this one, I've had to change the internal backlight on as well. The outside sensors, they get damp and they keep failing. They're not really that good. I could use something a bit better. Special delivery. Oh. So what's in this, Max? I think it's a weather station. Right, let's open it. Hooray! Are we going to actually open it? Yes. There's another box. Oh yeah, what do you think's in that? A pole. Oh, a pole to mount it on. Okay. Yeah, a mast to mount it on. Right, okay, we'll come to that in a minute. Let's open this one first. Okay. I haven't got right, a you come chair here. to sit No, on. that is a problem. What you about don't. sitting on your lap? You might have to. <coughs> we haven't got a lot of room with every box. Let's get rid of the outer box. Thank you. Well done. Right, um, can we <coughs> open this? Yes. What different things do you think this thing can measure? Temperature and humidity yeah. sensor. Yeah, what else? Um, rain. Yeah. Day? yeah rain and um, wind speed mm. and direction. Right, and I think something else as well, Max. Look. Sunlight. Sunlight as well. Pressure. Yeah, air pressure. And it also has the time which it picks up. One of the reasons I particularly wanted this one is it picks up the time from the internet rather than from um, atomic clocks, which is more reliable because we live in a valley and the atomic clock signals don't always work here. Right. Um, now, can I take this out? Uh, I think I'd rather take that out. Do you mind if I take that out? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll spin the cup on it. All right. Let me spin the cup. Um, uh, uh. Yes, all right, Max. All right, very good. So tell me, what do you think this bit measures? Rain. This bit measures? Speed. This bit measures? Wind direction. Very good. Uh, what else? We've got in here also, there'll be a temperature sensor uh, and humidity. And, I th ah, what, what's this bit? Max, stop blowing. Mm -hmm. What's this bit for? Solar. So Max, why do you think it has a solar cell? So that you don't need to change the batteries in it. Well, you do sometimes, but not so often. Uh, why do you think that's going around now in this room? Because of the air conditioning. Yes, I think so. Let's put this down and get the rest of it out. I think this will be the mains adapter for the clock, for the indoor part. Like the mains power. Yes, because it'll take batteries, but most of the time you want it to run on the mains adapter. It, it makes electricity. Well, of course, it doesn't make it. It it's turns it from. It turns it from mains into low voltage. The I think this is the temperature and humidity sensor here. So that, I believe, will measure temperature and humidity as its own sensor. Hopefully this is better made than the ones for the uh, cheaper units. You do need compass or GPS for wind direction calibration. OK. Um, I thought it would do that internally, but clearly not. Right, the batteries, I believe, go in underneath here. So let's first take the battery compartment off. It says frequency transmission are 433.92 megahertz. Tell you what, I have a scanner. It might be interesting to uh, listen to the uh, communications later. Right, let's take that screw out. Right, so this one takes three AA batteries. This unit, which clearly has different channels available, uh, takes two AAA batteries. And then the clock will also take batteries. That takes three AAA. So we need five AAAs and three AA's. Let's go and get them. Now, quite well designed that the battery hatch is underneath the main unit. So rain won't tend so much to uh, get into this as it would if it were on the top. And there's a, a reset button underneath as well. Just looking at the got a. Uh, a weatherproof seal at the back there so water won't get into the battery compartment but of course this has to be open at least to some extent to the elements at the front so that's reading 22.8 60 percent indoors right it's starting up it presently has a completely wrong time on it but it's measuring the uh i think it's measuring the internal no nope, it says outside temperature and uh Humidity is slightly different than that display showing. But give it a moment for all the readings to settle through. 
it says all switches should be in off position factory default setting actually they weren't so I'll do that Okay. it now reads 23.4 and 62 percent on both this and here display is much brighter now it's plugged Yay! in well okay. done, Dad. right before setting up we need to make sure that the uh, array the weather station array is at least three meters away from the console so we need to move this slightly further away right I was about to jump ahead and do the Wi-Fi setup but then it does say that before you do that you need to have signed in uh, as described in section 6 because you'll be asked to add the login details during the Wi-Fi setup so we have to do it in the order it says for which I think we need a laptop rather than a desktop computer because we have to connect to Wi-Fi of the uh, unit so uh, registration with a weather server website uh, do this with a desktop or laptop okay we'll do that with this computer here I'm going to try to condense what has taken me far too long to do which was be able to read my uh, weather station readings on a portable device in this case this is one of the two services I use called uh, weather underground otherwise known as wonder wonderground and this is the other one which is uh, weathercloud.com and you can read your measurements there now the first thing you need to do as instructed is sign up for those two services so just go onto any old PC or Mac and sign up for those um, and then you'll get some credentials from that uh, then you uh, need to get the display unit into its setup so you press and hold the min max button for several seconds and the wi-fi light uh, well indicator will start flashing on the display and that gets you into the wi-fi setup condition and then you need to have a device which you can put on the, its wi-fi so it now is a broadcasting unit it's the same way as a lot of smart bulbs and things work uh, it has its own web page you go to a 192.168.5.1 enter that uh, on the browser uh, once you've connected to its uh, weather station's own uh, Wi-Fi broadcast and you get a certain amount of time don't take take too long uh, to enter the details of your uh, home Wi-Fi and your weather cloud and uh, WonderNet Wonderground uh, login details it's a bit confusing the instructions seem to have some mistakes and I got very muddled up about exactly what credentials I was supposed to be using for which service so here's the thing do one at a time do one get it working and then do the other uh, because the credentials I use are somewhat different and I think in the instructions they may have muddled up the names a bit so in one of them what should be a password is called a key so you may have to experiment a little bit to get the right login details and I also found that once I had added the um, weather station to those services uh, it wasn't the end of it because you then have to link it and when you link on I think this is the uh, weather cloud one you press link in the website and it comes back with more login details great big long strings of details key numbers and you have to go back into the uh, display units uh, Wi-Fi setup page and enter them there that's the way I found it it's confusing it took me hours uh, and reading online I think other people have had similar issues with those two services they're quite hard to set up uh, and also rather confusingly the instructions don't really tell you that there's a Wi-Fi segment on the display but the one that the, the segment on the display that tells you that it's successfully communicating with at least one of those weather services is a little E with a sort of circle looks a bit like the old um, Internet Explorer symbol uh, logo that above the Wi-Fi segment on the display uh, unlike what it says in the manual where it says it's uh, next to the indoor temperature which is not there at all so all this takes a bit of getting used to 
But when you've got that E with a little sort of loop around it lit up, it's communicating with at least one of those services. And every so often you'll see it flick off and on, and that means it's updating the data to at least one of those services. So set them up one at a time, give yourself a few hours, it takes little patience. This will connect to your Wi-Fi and when it's done so the Wi-Fi symbol will light up and you know it's worked because it's got the right time and date which is pulled in off uh, time servers. So it's configured now, um, hopefully we can set it up soon. I do need to tell the unit when it's installed where north is so that the wind direction will be correct. Uh, okay, we're making progress. What I could do is mount this directly onto the eaves of my shed, which is a wooden shed with wooden eaves. So this would just mount straight onto the shed eaves with these screws. But the eaves aren't very strong. I don't think they'll take the load. So instead, I want to mount this uh, on the body of the shed. Now for that, uh, this will mount onto a pole and I have a offset pole uh, which I bought for this purpose, it's a bit expensive. Uh, so that will mount onto the shed and this will mount onto the pole. And when it comes to alignment, for the northern hemisphere where it says S here, that needs to be so that that is facing south. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea where that is because our house is covered in solar panels which are pretty much due south, but I can use the phone to fine tweak this and get it perfectly south so that the wind direction indication is correct. The other component I need to mount is this temperature and humidity sensor. And actually I mount that where my existing one is, uh, which is kind of inside a bit of a bracket uh, associated with our air conditioning unit. And that will keep it protected from the worst of the wind and rain. The weather vane is uh, like a little sail that sits below the, the main unit and should point to the direction of the wind. And you don't read it directly off the weather station, you read it on the display. But I've seen that be very unstable, especially under low wind conditions. Perhaps it's getting sort of eddy currents and it sometimes spins right the way around. Well, of course, it's not making any measurement of wind direction if it's spinning. So that may be not perfectly set up. Perhaps it needed a little damping in it. Uh, I know it has to be lightweight, but um, it seems to be inclined to blow all over the place and be something of a random number generator. Now, I did cut down some hedges to try to give it a clearer view of the, the whole of the surroundings in case there are lots of eddy currents in the uh, location it's been um, installed. Maybe if it's very high up, it may tend to do that a little less. But um, I think also they could have done some averaging to try to reduce uh, the uh, random number effect from the wind direction indicator. The very comprehensive display has really good black level on the parts that are not illuminated. But one thing it lacks is a seconds readout on the clock. That's a real disappointment. I'd have liked to have seen a seconds readout like my older weather station has. Now, I promised to listen on the weather station on its 433.92 MHz transmitter. Uh, it's a very heavily used frequency, but I think I managed to isolate it reasonably well using my ICOM ICR2 uh, radio scanner set to AM mode. I love the new weather station. In conclusion, we are pleased with this weather station we've had for about a week now. 
It has a comprehensive set of measurements, a nice display and a lot of features. Uh, there's a lot to get to grips with. I think it would have been better though if it had an app. Uh, then you could have easily set uh, various functions from there rather than, for example, the quite long button pressing sequence you have to do to set uh, alarms, for example. And it could also have made it much easier to uh, do that process of setting up the weather sharing apps uh, services. They were quite tricky. Uh, there's a process for updating the firmware on it, but uh, it's not clear from the manufacturer's website what version of firmware it should have and if there's any updates. A part of the display is a weather forecast and I have to say I find the uh, icons on there a little bit cryptic but um, in general it works pretty well. If you would like to buy one of these please do use the Amazon affiliate link below uh, so we earn a little bit if you uh, click on that. Um, it's not also the uh, bracket, the swan bracket that I purchased isn't exactly this, the one that was on Amazon but it's uh, very similar if not actually the same unit. Right, I'll do plenty more content on various technology, usually audio and video technology, in the near future. Bye for now.